Independence has never been easy. Nearly 250 years ago, it was something worth fighting for. The idea of a people who stood on equal footing, free to speak, free to wander, free to live. These were ideals worth risking everything for. Today, we find ourselves fighting old battles, not with past foes, but with ourselves. We are a nation divided, divided by skin, divided by opinion, divided by hate. It seems the very freedoms we once fought for have become stumbling blocks. Are we too busy seeking ourselves to even recognize the tragedy which surrounds us? Do we no longer see the profound need for the hand of God? In this moment, the truth of Scripture rings especially true. If we, the people, will humbly pray, turn from wickedness, and seek His face, then He will hear us. He will forgive us, and He will heal this land. Today, may we remember this one simple truth. True independence is found only in our dependence on God. Good morning. Would you stand, walk into Bear Creek? It's important to have the microphone on, right? Well, happy 4th of July. We're going to come today. We're going to ask the Lord to come and have his way in this place. Amen. We're doing things a little different today, but we're going to worship together. We're going to pray together. So let's ask him to come like he wants to, to come and have his way in our hearts. And in our church, and in our nation, we sing. Come like you want to. Come like you want to. Jesus, have your way. God of the breakthrough, nothing can stop you, let your freedom reign, you're falling now like heaven's ring, enthroned upon your children's praise you're tearing down our barricades as we sing we welcome the healer in this place we welcome the author of our faith we welcome the god who makes a way his name is jesus his name is Jesus, High King of Heaven, here in your presence, oh how good you are, you're falling out, you're falling down. Like heaven's rain enthroned upon your children's praise, you're tearing down our barricades as we sing. We welcome the healer in this place, we welcome the
are you welcome in this place? And this is our prayer. Let your living waters fall on sons and daughters. We will not resist your heart. Oh, so come and bring, so come and bring the breakthrough we surrender to you all our hope is in you God so let your living waters all in your place and in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to church. Welcome to Bear Creek this morning. We're so glad that you're here. You know, God is here in this place as well. His presence is here. Amen. And he is the ultimate healer. And so today we are going to have an incredible day ahead of us. We're doing things a little different today, but I'm going to explain that to you here in just a bit. But just be expecting to know that God is here. He's ready to move in our hearts and in our church and in our lives. And um, I was sharing with the pastors earlier today that, um, you know, today we're celebrating 4th of July. We're celebrating our uh, day of independence. And um, all the days, all the most important days in my life, uh, especially the happiest days in my lives, have been followed by a prayer, right? And so when it's my birthday, we'll pray. When it's someone else's birthday, we'll pray for them. When uh, my son was born, we prayed. You know, at my wedding, we prayed. All the happiest moments in my life, we've prayed. And so today that we're celebrating our Independence Day, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to pray for our nation. Because most people here would agree that our, 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 our nation needs prayer. Amen. And our nation needs healing. Right? And our nation needs healing. And so that's why we've welcomed, we've welcomed the healer in this place. We said, Holy Spirit, have your way. Healer, come and heal us. Have your way, not our way, have your way. And so today that's what we're going to do. We're going to come surrender before him and just thank him. Thank him for the amazing blessings that we have as a country, but also to turn our hearts to him and pray for our country as well. And so, like I said, things are going to be a little bit different today. Uh, Our pastors, some of our pastors are going to come up and one by one they'll come and they're going to be sharing from Second Chronicles 7. Uh, and so we'll hear from them. And then they're going to turn us to a moment of prayer. And then we're going to respond to that through song. Now we're going to be singing some songs that you may not know. 
Uh, but these songs are so intentional, so intentional. And so maybe in your seat, you can respond to them and we'll respond to prayer. And then the next pastor will come and he'll do the same thing. And we'll respond in prayer and then we'll respond in worship. So um, I'm going to give you a little break today. So why don't you grab your seat for just a few seconds. Before Pastor Ivan comes up here, I do want to remind you, if you're new, welcome to our church. There's ways for you to be able to connect. Find us out in the information desk. Find us out in the information booth on our next steps table. Ask any questions you'd like. There's also some information on your screens on how to be able to connect digitally uh, with our online digital connect card. So please do that whenever you have the time if you're new. Also, if you're going to participate today with a uh, with a offering or with your tithes, know that you can do that at any moment in our service. Our offering stations are towards the back. Or if you do that later on in your day electronically, um, you are more than welcome to do that. And so let me pray for us and then Pastor Ivan will come. Lord, we are expecting for what you are going to do. God, we thank you for the freedom that we have in you to be able to come in here and worship you, Lord, and pray for our nation and come before your throne and come into your courts, God. Lord, true freedom, true freedom begins in surrender. True freedom begins, Lord, when we give ourselves away to you completely and have you do what only you can do. So we turn our hearts to you today. We pray this in Jesus' name. And God's people said... If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their weak ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their lands. This verse talks about our position before God. If we really want God's blessing in our life, in our families, in our nation, we need to be humble and live depending on God. Jesus says that apart from Him, we can do nothing. And the Bible tells us that God hates pride. Pride is a sin like many other sins. But there is hope in this promise. God will hear from heaven and will forgive our sin and he will heal our land if we are humble and if we humble ourselves. I was born and grew up in Cuba. Cuba is a beautiful island, but my country has been under communist dictatorship for more than 60 years. That means... The people in my homeland don't have all the freedoms we have in the United States of America. That also means that all schools teach that God doesn't exist. So the first time that I heard that the United States is a nation under God, that called my attention in a powerful way. So it is, this is a great country for many reasons, but most important, because there are humble people in this nation that believe that we need God. So to be humble means that we follow God's ways instead of our own. So please join me in prayer. Please stand with me. And let's seek God's face in this moment. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this is your church. We are your people and we love you so much. Today, we humble ourselves again before you because you are our God. No one is like you. You are faithful. You are great God. You are our creator. So we come to you with humility and repentance. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you because we need you, Lord. Please help us to live our life in your way. We want to obey you and seek your will. We want to glorify your name among the nations forever and ever. Dear Father, bless the United States of America. Dear God, we believe your promise. We believe that if we are humble, 
and we humble ourselves, you will hear from the heaven, and you will forgive our sin, and you will heal our land. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you the glory and the honor for who you are and for the great things you are doing in our life, in our families, in our church, and in this wonderful nation. And we pray all of this in the powerful and the strong name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Let's respond to that through song again. You might not know these songs, but these are super intentional songs. This song called Heal Our Land. And that's what we just read right now. You take our lives flawed yet beautiful mm-hmm. Restore Refine
Would you take your seat once again? Second Chronicles, the reading 714. If my people were called by my name, will humble themselves as Pastor Ivan just highlighted. Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Pray and seek my face. You know, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for face was translated as presence. And so when we're saying to seek God's face, what we're saying is that we're seeking his presence, that we're seeking who he is, his character, his personalities, his fullness. We're seeking his presence is when we're seeking his face. Uh, The importance of God calling his people to seek his presence in this verse that we're reading now was because of this one thing. It was mainly because his people had turned away from him. His people had abandoned him and they needed to turn back to him. They had moved away from God and they'd turned to idols instead. And so in this verse, God is telling his people and he's telling us today, his church and his, and, and, and the United States to turn back to him, to seek his face and his presence. God is telling his people and his church today, We can't pray for the healing of our land, for the healing of our nation, and if we're not willing to leave our idols and turn around and seek his face and his presence. I wrote this down. I said, turning to God requires turning away from idolatry. And so before we pray in this next moment, I want to ask you this. What are you searching What are you seeking? Where are your eyes fixed? Is it his presence? Is it his face? Whose face are we seeking after the most in our lives? Is it the face that we turn to on the television news channel that tell us how bad things are and how our world is and how wrong they are? And how, how hopeless our nation has become. Is that where our eyes are fixed? I wrote this down. You know, it's, it's not that hope is hard to find. It's that we've misplaced our hope in things of the world. We've turned our eyes away from Jesus and we fixed them on something else. A theologian by the name of Carl Henry said this. He said, the early church didn't say, look what the world is coming to. Rather, they said, look what has come into the world. Their eyes weren't fixed on the world and how hopeless it become. Their eyes were fixed on Jesus, the hope of the world. That was a difference. So when we turn our eyes upon Jesus, when we turn our eyes upon Jesus and we look full in his wonderful face, I know you know this next part, then the things of earth will grow strangely dim. So the Lord says today, stop looking for idols to fill what only I can fill. Humble yourself, pray and seek my face. Then I will heal your land. Look to me. Look to the cross. Seek my face. Seek my presence. So let's pray that today. God, today we fix our eyes on you and you alone. God, we turn away from the things that our eyes are fixed on on this earth and this world and all the things that are hopeless, all the things that are broken. And we don't offer and we don't tell the world a problem. We offer them a solution and that's you, God. We offer them a hope and that's you, Jesus. So God, today we look to the cross. We turn our eyes on Jesus. We turn our eyes on Jesus. God, and would you fix our eyes on you? God, when we look to the cross, then our world becomes different. 
then our world is not this hopeless place. It's the world that you came and you died for. When we look to the cross, we don't see any of those things, but we see true hope. We see forgiveness. We see healing. We see reconciliation. We see salvation. But that only happens when we fix our eyes on you. We seek your face. So God, we look to you this morning. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to hear this song. This song talks about all the things that are not found when we look at the cross.
today turn your eyes turn your eyes look full in his wonderful face look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow that again and the things of the earth and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace in the light of his glory and grace and in the light of his glory Second Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is an if-then statement in God's word, and there's multiple if-then statements in God's word, but this is one of them. And what is an if-then statement? It means that if something or some things happen, then then something or some things will happen. You know, growing up when I was a, a little boy, I, I fell in love with a particular hobby and that hobby was collecting baseball cards. I have thousands of baseball cards in, my, in, in our house, up in a closet, much to my wife's chagrin. And I've started doing something recently with my daughter now that she's kind of old enough to start collecting things. We, we collect autographs now autograph baseball cards and so we'll send them in the mail and sometimes a couple of days later sometimes a couple of weeks later we'll get them back from the 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 player and they're signed and she has absolutely no concept of the significance of this I just show her the card and she sees the signature and she says dad that's awesome but she doesn't get that you know dad's elated that a former Astros player has been added to our collection I was thinking about that just Eber mentioned earlier this idea of idols. And, and I was on social media, Twitter specifically, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I watched a video of some grown men, some my age, some older, rushing at a sprint into a Walmart because they wanted to grab as many boxes of baseball cards as they possibly could and they're pushing and they're shoving and people are tripping and getting injured. And I just remember watching that video thinking, what, what, what message are we giving with that? Now, it, it's very true that, that we have made, certain people have made baseball cards an idol, but it's also true that we can make idols out of anything, big, small, you name it, we can do it. And there's this old hymn that I love. I grew up singing hymns in a little Baptist church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I grew up. And we sang this song, I know you know it, Come Thou Fount. And there's a line in this song that is very applicable to what we're talking about this morning. The line goes like this. It says, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. You see, the reality is that you and I were prone to wander. We get distracted. We make things idols that have no place being idols. And this is an incredible opportunity this morning to turn away from those things and to pursue Jesus. One of my favorite parts of what I get to do working with teenagers is summer camp. 
And oftentimes it takes me a week or two to recover from summer camp and this summer is no different. But the theme of our camp two weeks ago is very pertinent to what we're talking about this morning. It's John 1, 5, it says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. See, when we bow to idols, when, when we give in to sin, what we're doing is we're living in the dark. And right, you know as well as I do that the longer you live in the dark, your eyes become accustomed to it. This is an opportunity, Second Chronicles seven fourteen is presenting us to step out of the dark and walk in the light. And so we're gonna pray in just a second, but before we do, I just wanna ask you, what are those things, those idols? They may not be man-made idols like the Israelites made, but we all have them. And, and most of the time, they're not bad things. But anything can become an idol if it takes our, our eyes and our focus away from Jesus. And so I, I, I'm sure if you're like me that, that there are idols that you need to confess this morning. Maybe there's darkness that you're walking in right now in this moment that God is wanting to bring you out of and, and have you walk in the light because there's freedom in the light. And so let's just pray together. And as we do, I, I just, I wanna just ask you, there's gonna be a moment in, in a little bit near the tail end of the service where you have the opportunity to, to respond in whatever it is that God is, is asking or telling you to respond or to do. But right now in this moment, I would just, I would just ask you, what, what are those dark places in your life? What are those idols? that you probably know about, but you're not willing to admit because they don't seem like that big of a deal to you? But nothing in this life is worth the place that Jesus needs to have as first and foremost in each one of our hearts. And the most amazing thing, one of the most amazing things to me about our God is that he knows that we're prone to, want, prone to wander. He knows that we sin, that we mess up, that we fail him. But he also knows that he wants to remove our sin as far as the east is from the west. That he wants to restore and redeem and forgive and heal. And so this if then statement in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen if we will humble ourselves and we will pray and we will seek his face and we will turn from our wicked ways, we'll turn from our sin, we'll turn from our idols, then what does God promise to do? He promises to heal. And so God, we're here in this moment together as a family, acknowledging the fact that yes, there's, there's so much to celebrate about this day and what it represents. We are thankful to live in a nation that is free. But the reality, God, is that there are a whole lot of people that while they may be free as an American citizen or part of this country, they're not free spiritually. And there is bondage and there is sin, and there is captivity. And you have promised in your word that if we turn from those things, you will heal. And so Jesus, you, you right now in this moment, you're revealing areas of darkness. You are revealing areas of wickedness and areas of sin and idols in our hearts that we need to acknowledge. And that's uncomfortable. We don't like that. But Father, I pray that we would press through that awkwardness and that feeling of, of being uncomfortable. Because on the other side of that is healing and freedom and restoration. And those are the things that we need. And so, Father, I just pray for my brothers and my sisters that as you're speaking to our hearts, as you're revealing things in us that don't please you, where we fall short, I pray that you would help us to turn from those things. We are prone to wander, God, but you 
are so ready to forgive and to heal. And so as we continue with this service, Jesus, I pray that you would speak, that you would move, that you would push us into obedience. Help us, God, to do exactly what it is that you're calling us to do for your name and for your glory. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? Let's come before the Lord and confess. Just acknowledge our need for him today. Would you sing this? Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Together with one voice we sing, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need, oh, I need, every hour I need, my one defense, my righteousness, oh, God. sin runs deep your grace is more your grace is found is where you are and where you
You may be seated. Listen, this is a very important moment right now. I don't know about you, but there's two things that I feel. One is that I am broken. I'm broken hearted for where we are as a people, as a nation, as a church, as God's people. And I'm also hopeful because this truth, God's word, God's love for us, God gives us hope. Listen, in this passage, what is happening is Solomon and the people have just built this beautiful temple and God has blessed it and said, this is the place where I'm going to meet with you. But then God says, listen, you've strayed from me before and, and we're, we're people, sinful people, we're going to stray again. And he says, when you stray, when I no longer send the rain, when the locusts come, when hard times come your way, because listen, does God not discipline those he loves? So when we stray from God's truth, he does things to draw us back into a dependence upon him. And then he goes on and he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. God reminds us, one, at this very moment, he is listening to you and me. He is always ready to hear from us. He is present in this very moment. God is also a forgiver and a healer. He wants to restore, that's who he is by nature. You know, we live in a time where we look all around us and we see wrong things being called right. And we see right things being called wrong. We see people, instead of turning to the church for hope, they're turning away. You know, during this last year, year and a half in the pandemic, there's been a couple of surveys and polls done. Do you know for the first time in the period that they've been recording through Gallup that less than 50% of people believe that it's important to belong to a church? And then we wonder, where's God? Why are things going like they are? It's because he's trying to draw us back into his presence, to a dependence upon him. Because more than half of our culture has said, yeah, church, the truth that we learn and we teach here, the dependence that we share on God, the encouragement that we get from one another to follow him, it's just not that important to me anymore. There's also another interesting thing that came out during the pandemic. Do you know that those who stayed connected to their church we're the most hopeful group of people during the pandemic because there is power in the truth of the gospel that we share together with one another and that Christ has given to every one of us freely as a gift. So it says, if my people, if, here's the question, will you humble yourself? Will you pray and seek God more now than you ever have? Will you repent from any sin in your life that's getting in the way of your relationship with God and hindering his blessing in your own life? You see, God stands ready in this very moment. This is a defining moment for you and I. These moments come and go. God is always there, but there are moments like this that come and go and that we have the opportunity to respond to God. And he wants to heal your life. He wants to heal your kids' lives. He wants to heal our marriages. He wants to restore families. He wants to heal us from addictions that we may face. God wants to revive his church so that we as a nation continue to live as one nation under God, under God. Because when we step out from under God, we are going to live in chaos. 
So the question is, will you and I humble ourselves, pray, seek, and turn? Because if we do, God stands ready to heal and restore and to change. But it begins with God's people right here. So this is your moment. These steps become an altar. This is your place to meet with God, to pray for whatever it is that God is laying on your heart. We're going to give you a few moments. God, I pray now for your people. God, I am so thankful for those that are here. God, I pray that in these next few moments, however you're leading us, God, we want to declare our dependence upon you and we are coming to pray. One, God, if to make things right between you and me, that we would do that. But God, also to pray for our nation, for our families, for our kids, for our friends, for our coworkers, for our leaders, for our world. Because God, we believe in the power of the gospel, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand? As Pastor Tim has said, the altar is open. If you're in a place where the Lord is calling you toward repentance, this altar is open as we sing this song and we ask the Holy Spirit to come and move in us. We'll give you some time to do that. Thank you. 
We need the power of your presence in us, Lord. We need a move of your Holy Spirit in us as your people, in us as your church, in us as a nation, Lord. God, we need the Holy Spirit to come and move us and turn us to, to repentance and turn us back to you, Lord. Lord, we come with thankful hearts lord just the fact that we're able to even do this and come and have the liberties and the freedom to worship you and to seek forgiveness god but let us remember that forgiveness is not when we think that that you're on our side but it's rather when we are fully convinced that we are on your side lord that we are aligned with your ways. Change us as a people, we turn back to you. Heal our land, you're the ultimate healer. And because your presence is here, then healing is here, God. We thank you, we love you. And God's people said, amen. Why don't we celebrate just what the Lord has done today. Yes, amen. Well, thank you so much for being here on this very special July 4th. What a wonderful day, and I love you so much. I know we as pastors and staff, we're so thankful to be able to call ourselves a faith family. Listen, next week kicks off VBS, so be praying for that. If you have the ability to volunteer, we need people to help to allow us to as many kids as possible to be a part of that next week. So stop by our information desk. And uh, also next week, we are excited to introduce you to Sam Fowler, who is our Children and Family Ministries uh, pastor candidate. So you as a church have an opportunity to vote on him as we call our pastors. So we'll introduce him to you. Watch your information through the emails and social media where you can get to know him a little bit during the week. We love you. God bless you. Have a great, happy 4th of July. See you next Sunday.